Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new and welcome to my May wrap up. So May was an okay reading month for me. I did say in my last wrap up, my April wrap up, that there was absolutely no way I was beating that month. That will probably be my peak month for the year. I did end up reading 20 books in one month, which was just not like me at all. This month I have read nine books, which I mean, that's not too bad. What's that? That's like average of two books a week. It's really not too shabby. I'm happy with it. So today we are going to go through those books. I'm going to give you my ratings and my overall thoughts. I did end up reading quite a few five star reads in May, I believe. So I should have some good book recommendations for you guys. So yeah, if you'd like to hear all of my thoughts on the books I read in May, then just keep watching. So the first book I read in May was actually quite a disappointing one. And that was Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Daytime by Christina Lauren. I know so many people really love this book but it just was not for me at all. So in my May TBR pong I got a prompt for second chance author and I chose to give Christina Lauren a second chance because I really did not like the Unhoneymooners. I just thought it was quite average. Again, so many people rave about it, but it just wasn't that great to me. In this one, we follow Hazel and Josh. Obviously, they are friends, but obviously they fancy each other and they decide that they will help each other to find potential dates. So they keep setting each other up on blind dates and go on a double date together with these blind dates. And of course the whole time they are kidding themselves, they're in denial that they actually really want to be with each other. So it is a friends to lovers which I don't have a problem with in general. It's not like I don't like the trope but I just really didn't like the way it was done in this one. I think it's more understandable when it's like childhood friends who start to realise their feelings for each other whereas in this one as soon as they meet each other it's so clear that they fancy each other and they should be together so the whole time it was just really frustrating to me that they were setting each other up on other dates when obviously they wanted to be with each other and it was really obvious for both sides. I really didn't like the way that Hazel was written in this one and I think it was kind of the same in The Unhoneymooners. Like they just knock you over the head constantly with this idea that Hazel is not like other girls. And I don't know how many times we had to be told that in this story. I don't really like that idea anyway. But to be bashed over the head with it every single chapter, it was just too much for me. Also, I just really did not like the ending. There is a trope in this towards the end that I never enjoy and I really did not enjoy in this one. So yeah, there was some funny moments, some cute moments in this, but overall I just don't really have much good to say about it. I did give it two out of five stars and it wasn't a great second chance for Christine Lauren. I do plan to still read Love in Other Words at some point because so many people say that that is their favourite book of all time and their favourite book by Christina Lauren. So I will give them one more chance and try that book, but so far I'm not impressed. After that, I went from one extreme to the other and ended up reading a five star read. And that was The Silent Patient by Alex Nicolades. This is one of my new all time favourite thrillers. I thought it was absolutely amazing, so cleverly written. In this one, we follow a psychiatrist who purposely tries to get into this institution so that he can work with Alicia who is a young woman who seemed completely fine and everything seemed good in her life until the day that she shot her husband in the head five times and since that day she has not spoken a single word and this psychiatrist that we are following believes that he can be the one to make her speak and to find out what really happened that night. That is the basic premise of the story but there is so much more to it than that. The psychiatrist is one of the best unreliable narrators I've ever read and unreliable narrator is one of my favourite tropes of all time. I absolutely love it. In this one I was constantly switching back and forth between oh yeah I totally trust this guy and oh my god no this guy's dodgy what the heck is going on. It really really reminded me of Holden Caulfield from The Catcher in the Rye which is a huge compliment because he is basically the ultimate unreliable narrator in all literature and the twist in this one was phenomenal. I did kind of think I had an incline towards where it was going and I was kind of right but the, still the reveal of it and how it was all explained was just so shocking, so well done. Yeah. Amazing, amazing thriller. If you've not read this one, you need to. Next up, I read another five star thriller and that was I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. This is one that has been recommended to me a lot and I can definitely see why. It was an absolute wild ride with so many little twists and turns all the way through the book. In this one, we follow two perspectives, I believe. So we have Jenna Gray, who after a really shocking, traumatic experience in her life, decides to move away, move to this really quiet village and just sort of start afresh and try to 
get through her grief and see if she can find any happiness in the world. We then follow the detective I believe who is on the case for this traumatic event and see how the investigation goes for this thing that happened. I don't want to tell you what it is that happened because it's literally in the first chapter but it was so shocking because the blurb does not tell you what it is and no one really should tell you what it is I believe because when I read it I gasped and it's literally on like page two. There is an amazing twist halfway through this book that I am still reeling from. I did not see it coming whatsoever and then Claire McIntosh keeps it up with other little twists throughout the book and yeah just another really cleverly written thriller. Even though there's so many twists they all make sense. They don't seem like too far-fetched in my opinion. I also feel like a lot of thrillers like you don't get too invested in the characters. It's just all fast-paced plot whereas with this one I was nearly brought to tears towards the end just because I was so invested in these characters and what was happening to them. Yeah. Another amazing, amazing thriller. Okay, we've got a bit of a theme going. The next one is another thriller and that was The Escape Room by Megan Golden. If you'll remember, I read The Night Swim last month as my Patreon book club pick for April and I really enjoyed that one. I gave it four out of five stars. This one, I ended up giving three out of five stars. Like, it was okay. It was all right, but it wasn't anything special. In this one, we follow a group of like high-flying Wall Street people I believe they all go into this elevator thinking that they're going to like this workplace event where they're going to do some sort of team building and then when they get in the elevator they're told it is an escape room and they have to figure out how to get out but in the time that they're in there they're forced to admit different secrets and reveal different things about each other and it all gets very dark and supposedly thrilling. <laughs> I was really excited about this one. I really enjoyed the concept of them being stuck in this elevator escape room and turning against each other, all of these different secrets being revealed. I do really love thrillers like that but this one just wasn't as shocking or gripping as I thought it would be. I did race through this book. It is a very very easy read. It's very fast paced. I enjoyed my time with it but I just wasn't shocked by it. I did feel like I could just walk away from it halfway through and not really care if I didn't know what happened. It was also very predictable in my opinion and just not engaging at all. <laughs> like it was a good fast read if that's what you're looking for but definitely not one that I will continue to recommend. Next up we have another thriller and that was The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lupina. In this one we follow a couple who decide to go next door to their neighbours for like dinner and drinks and they leave their newborn baby in their house alone loan because the babysitter cancels last minute. They take the monitor over with them. They think everything will be okay but when they get back the baby is missing and things go from there. Different people are implicated. Different secrets come to light. Cherry Lupina is the queen of suburban paranoia and this one is no different. We are scrutinising all the different people in this little suburb they all have their secrets, they all have their different entanglements and yeah. I really enjoy Sherry Lupina's writing. She has a sort of writing where I just turn page after page. I don't stop reading and I just can't wait to find out what is going on. I also really love how she flicks between different perspectives constantly. We get a few different characters perspectives throughout the novel and she flicks between them quite a lot which keeps the pace up. She has done that in all of the fillers I've read by her so far and I think it's such a good format. I did find some of it a little bit predictable but I did still really enjoy it. There are quite a few twists in this so I guess some of them others I didn't and I did still just really enjoy this massive web of lies and deceit and just trying to untangle all of it. And then again it was really cleverly written, really fast paced and very twisty. And I can't remember if I said but I gave this four out of five stars. Next up I read my Patreon pick for me which was The X-Hex by Erin Sterling. I did of course film a spoiler reading vlog for my patrons and this one it was all right. <laughs> In this one we follow Vivi and Reese, and Vivi is a witch. She lives in a place called Penn. No. She lives in Graves Glen. She comes from a family of witches but she doesn't really use her magic very often and then she goes through a horrible breakup. I think she's still a teenager at this point or very young 20s and she gets a little bit drunk, she has a little bubble bath and she puts a hex on her ex Reese. and then however many years later, nine years later, Reese returns to Graves Glen and it turns out that this 
text may not have been as innocent as she thought it was and the two of them must work together to try and break the curse and save the town. This one was like a fun light romantic read but it wasn't anything more than that for me. I would recommend it to people who are looking for a good fast fun fluffy read with a little bit of magic in it and some good sexual tension. I did really enjoy that sexual tension between Reese and Vivi, it was probably one of the best things about the book and I did love the sort of feminist witchy touch to it. However my most hated <laughs> trope in romance is miscommunication and this entire novel is based around that trope. Like nothing in this novel would have happened if the two characters had just communicated right at the start. So it is hard for me to rate it very highly because I just hate miscommunication. So yeah, three out of five stars, a good fun romantic read but nothing special. Once again we are going from one extreme to another in a way because next up in May I read my new favourite romance, November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I do have a whole reading vlog for this book. I... Oh. If you want to know all my thoughts on this book you can find it in that reading vlog but basically I freaking loved it. In this one we follow Fallon and Ben who meet one night but that night she is moving across country to go and pursue her career and she really wants to do that for herself. So they decide that they will part ways but they will meet up every year on November 9th and Ben who is an aspiring writer will write a novel about their experience. Again that is all you really need to know. This is a Colleen Hoover so of course it gets emotional. Nobody gives me the feels quite like Colleen Hoover. It takes a lot for me to cry at a book but I cry at every single one of Colleen Hoover's. I just get so invested in her characters. I think she writes them so well. All of her plots are twisty and intriguing and different to just your usual romance reads and I don't think I've ever been quite as invested as I was in Ben and Fallon. I also really enjoyed that this is in the same universe as Ugly Love so we do see Tate and... Oh my god, Tate and who? This is ridiculous. We love Tate, Miles. Tate and Miles. We see Tate and Miles in this, which I absolutely loved. And just the whole thing was perfect. I absolutely adored the ending. Yeah, go read this book. Finally, in May, I read two more thrillers and these were both in a reading vlog as well, where I did a 24 hour reading vlog reading only thrillers. So once again, if you want my full thoughts, you can go watch that vlog. But first of all, I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney and I gave this one five out of five stars. In this one we follow Adam and Amelia who spend the weekend in the Scottish Highlands in like this old renovated chapel to try and save their marriage. But while they're there it takes a very dark and creepy turn. Secrets from the past are brought up. Their relationship is put to the test. There is a god almighty twist in this one that just... I didn't even begin to contemplate the fact that that could be a twist. It was just so well done. It continued to twist throughout. It had the most amazing, creepy, gothic atmosphere, which I loved. I had to read it with the lights on because of all the little eerie goings on in this old chapel in the Scottish Highlands. This was actually my first Alice Feeney book and now I want to read all of her books because this one was just incredible. Such a good thriller. Five out of five stars. And finally in May, I read my new favourite book, of all time. I know it's a bold statement but I stand by it and that is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This book. In this one we follow Dr Scarlett Clark who is a sexy bisexual English professor at this old university and she is also a feminist serial killer who kills one disgusting man every year. But her most recent kill goes a little bit hairy. She kind of loses control and therefore an investigation ensues in which Scarlett puts herself into the investigation to try and stop them from working out what is going on. It's very criminal mindsy. And then we have Carly who is a young woman who is a freshman at this university who is trying to escape quite an abusive family life. Her father did not treat her, her or her mother very well. And when she gets to this university she just wants to escape into her studies and to her her new life until her roommate is sexually assaulted at a party and she makes it her mission to get revenge on this boy. And it goes from there. It is just the ultimate feminist sexy serial killer story. There is so much in this that is just like amazing observations of sexism, feminism, 
Sexual Assault. If you liked the Mindfuck series, you need to read this book because it gives off very similar vibes, but better. The women in this book are just so complex, intelligent, and just full of rage for the way that they are treated. And it's all just written in the best way. Like, oh, I just absolutely loved it and I will recommend it to anyone who will listen. So that is it for the nine books that I read in May. It was actually quite a good reading month to be fair. We had a couple of duds but we had a lot of five star books and we also had my new favourite romance and new favourite book of all time. So I count that as a very good month. If you made it to the end of this video then pop the flame emoji down below just because I'm looking at this gorgeous flaming red hair and thinking about all the rage and sexiness in this book. Pop that emoji down below just to let me know that you made it to the end of this video and that you enjoyed your time here but as always if you did enjoy the video then do please give it a big thumbs up subscribe for more bookish content from me comment down below with any of your thoughts and feelings I do reply to every single comment I love you all and I will see you in my next one